Oh my god, guys, I just had the most annoying train situation. I'm not going to explain it here because I just had a rant at my vlog, my tea weekly vlog. Um, but basically, it just took me an extra 20 minutes to get home and it wasn't even my fault. But today, I'm going to be talking about this book that I just started reading today. I'm only two chapters in. Um, but it's called How to See the World by Nicholas Mez Bezoff don't know how to say his name. But my friend Claudia, hey Claudia, she watches these videos. <laughs> she lent this to me because she said that it kind of changed her perspective on the world and I just think it's really interesting so far. Currently, I have read the chapters introduction and the name of the introduction is How to See the World at chapter one, How to See Yourself. <coughs> I've been sneezing all day and I really want some soy milk. So hold up. This is the best soy milk ever. Get this. You will thank me later. But in this book, they just talk about some really interesting concepts that you don't really think about. And a lot of it is based on the past. So images and photos and artworks in the past. So they have like like images throughout the book. And it kind of just talks about the images and perspectives. And I think it's so interesting. So I'm just going to briefly talk about each of the two chapters that I read today. The book starts off the introduction with talking about this planet, this planet, <laughs> um, about Earth and the first photo that NASA took. And this is probably the most famous photo image of the Earth. And only three humans have seen this in person, which is insane. And this was taken in 1972. This is the first image of the Earth. 1972 that was not long ago at all that's insane technology has developed so much so quickly it's very focused on technology and the internet and the rise of media social media specifically and how this has like impacted mainly teenagers today and how we communicate and how we present ourselves online it's very interesting because you don't really read books on social media it's more just articles online you'd never really read a book on these type of things i took a photo of this one sentence that i really liked if you put something online you want people to engage with it and i think that is so true i mean unless you're storing things online and you're using online as an online storage like a cloud or something besides that you put content out onto the internet because you want people to engage with it even if you say that you don't want people to see it there's still the possibility that people can see it. And I think that's what's really powerful about that sentence is that sometimes you don't even realize that you're doing it and you're like, yeah, I don't care if people like that or I don't care if people see that. The underlying thought behind that is that you want people to engage with it. And I think that's a really interesting notion. And there's some dot points here. So I read out a couple of all media are social media. We use them to depict ourselves to others. Our bodies are now extensions of data networks, clicking, linking, and taking selfies. That dot point is so true. We have become technology, essentially. We are on our phones, our computers, our iPads. We are on technology constantly. And in a sense, our bodies have now become part of those things. Media and technology is taking over our lives. Oh, and there's something Claudia highlighted. How we see ourselves leads to the question of how we see. Let's move on to the chapter, How to See Yourself. This one was quite interesting. I read it just then, but also I was like a bit out of it because of everything that happened just then. But it brought in aspects of like old art and oh, there was this one painting that I found so interesting. I literally stared at it for so long on the train because it was talking about this and whether it was a mirror or not. Um, you can't really tell on the webcam, but yeah, it's a super interesting image. I'll put the name. I think you say Velikez La Meninas. Meninas. This part I really liked because it talked about gender in the media. So this is page 53 if you guys want to read it. The man's role in the film, Mulvey says, is the active one of the forwarding the story, making things happen. She adds that the man in the story controls the film fantasy and also emerges as a representative of power in a further sense, as a bearer of the look of the spectator. Men look at the action through the eyes of the male hero, and women are obliged to do the same. A form of compulsory gender manipulation. That's just saying, in general, we assume that perspectives in media are from a male perspective, especially in like TV shows and movies, when we don't actually know who like the protagonist is, or like when we are reading a book. You don't know the gender unless they have gender specific pronouns. So your initial reaction is to assume that the protagonist 
for the person first person is male. Actually, that was like me in To Kill a Mockingbird. I thought Scout was a boy, but she's actually a girl. And I didn't realize that till like heaps into the book because I just assumed that Scout was male. Um, And then a bit further on, it says, then we realize that it is Sherman herself who has created the scene and that she is using it not to present herself as a victim, but to make us aware of the ways in which cinema depicts women as objects to be played with. So this talks about like the objectification of women in the media. By manipulating back Sherman and many other artists of her generation, such as Barbara Kruger, she is an amazing artist, and Sherry Levine, claim the right to be the selves they wanted to be. Her photographs re-perform the way women are represented to say something important about the actual experience of women in daily life. And then they also brought in stuff about race, and there was this guy here. He did self-portraits, and let me read out something. Fosso set out to undo the white gaze by making fun of it fun of it in his self-portraits. He has described the particular self-portrait as, I am an African chief in a western chair with a leopard skin cover and a boutique of sunflowers. I am all the African chiefs who have sold their continent to the white men. I am saying, we had our own systems, our own rulers, before you came. It's about the history of the white man and the black man in Africa. I really like how this book has already talked about minorities in regards to like gender and race and I'm only two chapters in which is awesome. Oh and then it talks about selfies <laughs> and it literally just has all these stats about selfies and then it talks about snapchat, what a selfie is, how people take selfies and then there's like this snapchat ad and it's <laughs> snapchat self-image ad above reflects its target audience of young women brackets perhaps unsurprisingly they are conventionally attractive white and blonde in this case. <laughs> I just thought that was super funny. I read that on the train and I was like, ha, so true. I really enjoyed this book so far and thanks so much to Claudia for lending this to me. I can't wait to finish reading it. I'll probably, I might talk about it if I find some more interesting things in the future, but I don't want to make every video about this book. I just wanted to bring it to you guys' attention. Make sure you check it out. I kind of want to buy it for myself now. I'll just read Claudia's for now. So yeah, I hope you guys have a really awesome day and I will catch you guys tomorrow. Peace out.